Hey everyone, welcome back to the great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're still in the very first case, but we managed to pull out Miss Brett to the witness stand. And now we're gonna see what she has to say. Let's get starting. A frightening and sorrowful sight. I had arranged. I had arranged to meet for a slightly late lunch on with Dr. Wilson that day. The professor was unable to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beef steak. After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor, and they got into a fierce argument. Then, not long afterwards, the accused took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. I don't carry a gun myself, so obviously I couldn't have been the culprit. Okay, Mrs. Brett. Seems fishy. So she's maintaining that you got an in, uh, into an argument with the professor at the end of which you shot him. Which is an out and out totally unfounded lie. Still, the statement is very compelling. After all, she's an elegant, refined, young and beautiful gentlewoman from Great Britain. In star contrast to you, dressed from head to toe in a dull black school uniform. I'm dressed exactly the same way as you are, except for the flapping and red ribbons. Well, anyway, this is our only chance to expose her testimony as the fiction that it is. <laughs> if you can't do that, the trial's over. Even you, with your thick skin, must be able to feel the murderous looks you're getting from around the room. Only too well. I feel half dead already. And the fact that I can't see a single inconsistency in her testimony isn't making me feel any better either. The first thing to do is press her on any of her statements that seem even slightly off to you. That I would have done that anyway. Do that, and an opening will present itself. I promise you. I need to expose the true face of this exotic foreigner that's hiding behind the mask. That's what I should be aiming for in this cross-examination. Alright, so let's get going. So we're gonna just press like crazy. Yes! After 2 p.m., in fact. That's really quite a late lunch, isn't it? Objection! You don't keep up with the latest fashions from Britain, do you? Late luncheons are on vogue, isn't that right? No. Yeah! Hmm, a decisive English no has quite a sting to it. The gentlewoman is currently working in the victim's research laboratory, it seems. So it was apparently a daily occurrence that they would lunch together. But on the day in question, the victim had another appointment in the clinic first. Yes, which we can prove from the medical report card that was submitted as evidence earlier. That's right. Miss Brett and the victim went to lunch following the victim's treatment, which is why it was so late. Yes, yes, that all makes perfect sense. Such wonderful logic! What a shiny example of English intelligence this fine gentlewoman is! So you both arrived at the restaurant. What happened next? The professor was unable to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beef steak. Hmm. Yes! He was unable to eat, you say? And that was because he just had a tooth removed at Hot Clinic, correct? That's right. Um, you're supposed to actually check with the witness before answering. Was Miss Brett aware of that fact? It seems so, yes. She'd heard that the professor was to have some dental treatment. So that would mean... That it was you who ate the steak pictured here, is that right, Miss Brett? That's right, yes. The print you have there shows the table exactly as it was left after the horrifying events. It 
exactly as it was left? Dear me, what a harrowing experience. To have traveled to a distant island on the far side of the world and been brought in such a tragic incident. Have no fear, my dear lady. I will I swear I will crush the evil fiend that has subjected you to this terrible plight. So the victim, Dr. Wilson, had nothing to eat or drink at all. That's right, other than some carbonated water. Just water? Yes, the professor was unable to eat, but he had been given permission to drink water. So it appears that the diners toasted their lunch with a glass of water each. Hmm, they each raised a glass of carbonated water. What do you think, Rinosuke, about the witness's last statement? It sure is meaningful because... Let's check the court record. There is no other glass to be seen here. No glass to be seen. So this has to be meaningful, right? Very meaningful. That last statement of yours, Miss Brett, has a profound bearing on this case. Well, well, how fascinating. Do tell us what is this profound bearing, huh? Hmm. The significance of the statement will become apparent when the time is right. The defense called for the witness's last statement to be formally added to the testimony. Well, sidestep, counsel. Very well, Miss Britt. Kindly repeat what you just said to be added to your official testimony. Gladly, she said. That was brilliant, Kazuma. I'm going to remember that one. Which one? The significance will become apparent when the time is right. I could really use that phrase. I'd hope there are some more useful tips you're picking up from this experience than that, you know, Ske? I ordered a beefsteak for myself and the professor and I said cheers over a glass of carbonated water. I'm gonna press again. Yes! So both you and the professor drank this carbonated water, did you? Yes. Being the waiter, I poured the two glasses myself. I clearly remember doing so. Except you're actually a detective. And the beef steak? That was for you, Miss Britt. The lady says that she'd heard it was not customary to eat beefy until Japan opened its door to the world. Yes, that's true. What a frightful place, is the lady's opinion. And I've heard it's not customary to eat sashimi in Great Britain. Now that's frightful. Every country has its own cuisine. As long as people have food to eat, what does it matter what it is? True, come to think of it. The first time I tried carbonated water was much more of a shock than the first time I tried beef. But anyway, back to this witness's statement. Somehow, I feel like there's something out of place in what she's saying. We already identified that, I think. We need to pounce one ev uh, on even the slightest thing now. Because you never know what might lead us to our goal. Our goal of turning this trial around. Understood, Kazuma. But we're gonna keep pressing here. After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor and they got into a fierce argument. Yes! Let's press. I never get into an argument with the professor. All I, did was, all I did when I noticed him was go over to say hello. Please don't get angry with me. No, no, I wasn't directing that retort at you. It was meant for the lady next to you. But anyway, as I said, I did not argue with the professor. I'm afraid your words are in the way. Sorry? Miss Brett does not appear to speak Japanese. No, no, of course not. Japanese is such a cumbersome language anyway. English is the future. 
We must all speak English. I wonder if the prosecution will feel that way forever, or only the presence of a beautiful woman, huh? Well, that beautiful woman is telling blatant lies with a completely straight face. I have to find something that will unravel her testimony, no matter how seeming, uh, seemingly unsignificant it may be. Anyway, it seems that after the argument, the accused briefly returned to his own seat. That part ties in with what you said, doesn't it? Yes, I still had some coffee to drink. And the next time you got up after that was when I'd finished my coffee and stood up to leave. Okay. Hmm. Then, not long afterwards, the accused took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. Yes! Press. Like I said, I did not shoot that gun. And like I said, there's no point repeating that assertion over and over. Well, I wasn't expecting to be attacked by my own side. Nevertheless, defendant, you can't deny that when the shot rang out in the restaurant, you had a gun in your hand. Well, yes, that's... that's true. But... But all I did was pick up the gun I saw on the floor next to the professor as I was leaving the restaurant. In fact, yes! There was some... someone much closer to the victim than me at the I'm time. The highly... That was too fast for me. That will do, you dirty written scoundrel! Dirty? Your baseless accusations could very well cause an international accident, boy! It seems to me that your accusation is just as baseless as yours. <laughs> what nonsense! The lady is merely stating what she saw. And this is already an international incident as far as I'm concerned anyway. Last statement? I don't carry a gun myself, so obviously I couldn't have been the culprit. Yes! Let's press. It's all very saying that, but can you prove it? Absolutely. I verified it personally. You verified it? Yes. Immediately after the incident, I checked to make sure the lady was not carrying a weapon. I distinctly remember her saying, I'm not. That's all you did? You just asked her? Surely you carried out a physical search, Inspector. No. What on earth not? Why on earth not? The honorable English gentlewoman clearly stated that she did not possess a weapon. There was obviously no need for any further probing into the matter. Or... There was no permission given for any further probing into the matter, perhaps? Think what you will. But if you're going to continue with this preposterous claim that the refined lady was concealing a firearm, the prosecution demands that you support your assertion with facts. In other words, he wants evidence. Uh... The lady wishes to point out that of course she wanted to stay and assist with the investigation. But she was in a hurry to give a presentation at the university, so she was compelled to leave. Not to mention the fact that your office had to tell you, uh, had to, had told you to get the woman out of there. Not get out of there. get her out there. I just urged her to leave. The lady would like to point out that she is in no way meant to run away from the scene of the crime, which is why she is only too happy to cooperate and testify here in court today. Of course. Unlike a certain student, you refuse to admit when the game is up. You could at least have the courtesy to pay attention when I'm goading you. So she's maintaining that she got into an argument with the professor at the end of which you shot him. Which is an out and out totally unfounded lie. Still, the statement is very compelling. After all, she's an elegant, refined, young and beautiful gentleman from Great Britain. In stark contrast to you, dressed from, ah, we got that already, so let's just jump over it and present some evidence. 
Yeah, yeah, we know. I know, Kazuma. I know. We know already. It's fine. Yeah, we're gonna just jump over because we have that already. Yeah, 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 yeah. We knew that. Okay, so it was... Yeah, there we go. And let's just present this. Yes! That's it! Let me just confirm something, please. It's it's to do with the photographic print. Just a short while ago, you spoke of this print showing the victim's table at the crime scene. That it was exactly as it was left. That is correct, the lady says. Well, that is, it's, um, it's odd, very odd. Dear me, what's odd is the defense's inability to express itself. Uh, you know, Oscar, what is it about the print that looks odd to you? Well, obviously it's, it's the cheers. The cheers? Miss Brett just told us that she and the professor said cheers over a glass of water. But if that's true... There should be two glasses on the table, not one. Oh. You're quite right, Council. There's only one glass pictured there. Attention! Are we supposed to be impressed by this nitpicking of a minute here? What possible difference does the presence or absence of glass make on the case? Objection! Minutia, you say? Could it be that the detective here removed the glass from the table to conceal the lady's presence? Of course not. I would never do something so reckless. But there should have been two glasses on the table. Or are you going to try to tell me you can clink with only one? You're quite right. I certainly took two glasses to the table. Inspector, what did the lady say? It would seem that it was Miss Brett who took the glass from the table. What? It was also terrifying, everything that happened. I panicked and I thought I should try to hide the fact that I've been here at all, she's saying. Good gracious. Sorry. That's going to cut it, I don't know. There, as I assured the court before, this is of no consequence at all. Oh, please. We must remember that this student had just murdered this lady's lunch and companion before her very eyes. Who could blame her for concealing a glass or two in her state of disarray? That's absurd. Oh, really? So do we take it that you are now going to accuse this vulnerable, young, and beautiful woman of mischief? What? No, no, this, this can't be put down to mischief. I'd like to know exactly how the lady took the glass from the sea. It seemed that she slipped it into a small handbag she was carrying. A handbag, you say? Yes, Your Excellency. A small handheld pouch commonly carried by a well-to-do woman, by uh, by well-to-do women in England. So the beautiful lady has very graciously explained how and why she removed the glass from the scene now. However. That remains that this glass has absolutely no bearing in the case. Hmm. This student has been trying to confuse the court with logical reasoning, but in the end it comes to nothing. No more pretentious accusations! You have wasted enough time already. Indeed. 
The lady has offered a satisfactory explanation as to why she removed this glass. I think henceforth we can consider the matter to have no bearing on the case. Counsel for the defense, are you in agreement? Um, well, I don't know really. If you want to pursue this matter further, you're going to need to show that it has some deeper significance. Yes, you're right. So she took the glass away in her handbag. If there's a d deeper significance in this, it's of course the handbag, right? It's not the glass, it's the handbag. Let's go with the handbag. Wait, the lady put the glass in her handbag, you say? Yes, do try to keep up. It's already been explained to the court that all English gentlewomen carry handbags for small items. Let me see. A little while ago, Miss Brett stated the following. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. But what you forget to mention was her handbag. In which it would be perfectly possible to conceal a gun. You're right. Well done, partner. I had a feeling you'd pick up on that, too. What are you insinuating, you wild blackguard? It's really very simple. The gunshot was heard when the defendant picked up the gun from the restaurant floor. As he didn't fire the gun, you can deduce there must, be, there must have been another firearm at the scene. The true murder weapon, if you will. You? You can't seriously be suggesting? Inspector Hosunaga! Yes. Did you or did you not search Miss Giselle Brett's handbag on the day of the murder? No, sir. I did not. As I thought. In other words, another gun? The one that was actually used to kill the professor? Could have been hidden in Miss Brett's handbag! No! Order, order, order. What is the meaning of this, Inspector? The meaning of what, Prosecutor Aochi? Why on earth did you not have the lady open her handbag and show the contents at the time? Thanks to your bungling incompetence, now she has to endure these uncomfortable accusations. Brilliant work, partner. Now we have a chance to expose the real woman behind the mask. Do you think so, Kazuma? <coughs> well, what a sorry situation. Clearly you have no faith in the police. As I said, I did not search the lady's handbag after the shooting, simply because it was unnecessary. Unnecessary in what way? I ought to thank the student lawyer, really. I have a piece of evidence here that I had completely forgotten about. This photographic print. This print is a photograph that I thought would be prudent to take immediately after the shooting. As you can see, it clearly shows Miss Brett's handbag. Well, I ain't never. You can see right through what's to what's inside. That's right. Apparently, meshwork bags like these are the height of fashion in London at the moment. Hmm, so the contents are clearly visible. Exactly, so there was no need to search the lady's handbag. If there had been a gun inside, it would have been immediately obvious. <sighs> As you can see, there's nothing to imply Miss Brett's guilt here. Thank you for helping to prove that, Narodo san. <sighs> Inspector Hosonaga, 
You will submit that printer's evidence at once. Certainly, Your Excellency. The photograph of the handbag has been entered into the court record. Photograph of handbag. A photograph taken by Hosonaga-san after the incident occurred. It shows Miss Brett's handbag on a chair by the victim's table. Hmm. I think you've had long enough to cross-examine the witness counsel. The court has now been shown considerable evidence. As the photographic print just submitted into the court record appears to have no further significance, I am satisfied that there is no longer any room for doubt in this matter, and I must make my ruling. Indeed, and there's only one logical conclusion. That the pathetic rookie slumped over the bench before us is the only possible perpetrator of this crime. Hmm. No, it's just when I thought I was beginning to turn things around. I'm in a worse situation than I was at the start. Um, Kazuma? I'm sorry, Rinosuke. Now that the cross-examination of the witness is over, there's no way to force the trial to continue. <coughs> what? You, you mean this is it? <laughs> I must say, you put up quite a fight for a rookie student, but the weak are meat while the strong eat. You were wasting your time. There is no way to defeat true justice. In fact, you can chew on to your heart's content from the inside of yourself. This can't be happening. Am I really going to be found guilty of a crime that I didn't commit? And Kazuma? His dream of going to study in Great Britain will slip through his fingers? Kazuma? What? Is there really... Is there really no chance now of turning this trial around? You heard the judge. There's nothing about that last photograph the detective produced that we can contest. Which means there's no basis on which we can argue for the trial to continue. Very well. I will now proceed immediately to the ruling. It seems we will be able to report to the British government on time after all. That smack little... Inosuke Naruhoto, having considered all of the evidence yes! raised before... Wait, Your Excellency! And you guys also have to wait. This is... It for this episode of the Grace Ace Attorney Let's Play by me. We're gonna have a little break and see you in the next episode when things turn around apparently. See you then.